Hello, everyone, and welcome to the DESP Kronos Town Hall. I am so grateful that all of you are able to attend this virtual town hall today to learn more about Kronos. Today, we would like to discuss the new time and attendance software we have been working so hard to install called Kronos Workforce Central. This state-of-the-art product will accurately track employee time, improve productivity, and give employees a view of their time and leave information. We are also installing Kronos Telestaff, which will schedule our state police troopers and dispatchers. On today's agenda, we will cover how Kronos will function for DESP users. We will review the roadmap for the project. We will also cover frequently asked questions and look, to, look at next steps. At the end of this presentation, Accenture, our project management consultant, will provide a demonstration of some of the basic functionalities of Kronos. So let's look at how we will function with Kronos. As mentioned, we are deploying two Kronos modules. The Workforce Central module will help most of us track time and attendance, as well as request time off and other types of leave. Troopers and dispatchers will be using Telestaff. This will enable them to digitize their complex scheduling needs. Additionally, Telestaff users will now be able to be notified and secure overtime opportunities via text messages. This is a view of, of the Workforce Central Navigator. This is the view that you will see once you log in and it displays your schedule as well as timestamps or punches you have recorded so far. Additionally, this is where you can clock in using the record timestamp button that is shown. Most employees will have up to seven widgets on your screen. And active widgets appear minimized along the right side of the screen and display limited information until they are maximized. The widget in the main screen is the active widget. The job aids on how to use Workforce Central have been uploaded to the DESP intranet page. Please check them out to learn more. This is a view of Telestaff. This is the view that troopers and dispatchers will see once you log in, and it displays your schedule as well as other important information. Punching in and out for troopers and dispatchers is not required. Job aids on how to use Telestaff have been uploaded to the DESP intranet page. Please check them out to learn more. This is a map of the project journey. We are deploying information, job aids, e-learnings, and other items designed to help you learn as much as possible. We know that this process is moving quickly. We know that you are dedicated to the success of this project, and we want you to understand that we are here to help in any way that we can. Now I'd like to walk through a few of the most common questions that we've received during our, our testing phase. How can I clock in or clock out as a non-managerial civilian employee? Non-managerial and non-confidential employees are required to clock in at the start of your day and out at the end of your day. You can clock in or out in three places. The first option is the time clocks throughout the offices using biometrics. You are not required to use these devices, but you must have your supervisor physically register you on them if you choose to use this option. If you prefer, you may sign in and out on your state-issued laptop or computer. Lastly, you have the option of downloading the Kronos app on your phone. Opening the app, you will see a punch option and can, cl and can clock out that way as well. Do I need to clock out for lunch? The short answer here is no. You do not need to clock out for lunch. Originally, we were going to require this, but after hearing from many of you and your bargaining unit representatives, we worked to put a process in place to avoid the need to clock out for lunch. How will I add new staff to Kronos? HR will be handling new employees being added to the system via, via a CO1092 form that the Office of the State Comptroller uses. So new staff will be in the system and provided a schedule before they begin work. Telestaff employees will be handled similar, similarly and can be transferred among work locations by the master sergeants or administrative sergeants. How will I get my overtime? Overtime will be collected and, and entered just as it is today, only with Kronos. The standard practices and procedures for pre-approval remain in place. With that being said, supervisors can schedule overtime and approve it directly in Kronos. Telestaff users will be able to be notified about overtime opportunities, including Troop OT, HCP, and OPA via text and or voice calling, 
and can respond directly to the system to accept or reject an overtime opportunity. What happens if I forget to clock in? Forgetting to clock in once in a while is okay. The most important thing to do is notify your supervisor so they can correct it. For supervisors, this is something that is taught in the e-learning and will be demonstrated later today. What about paper timesheets? No more paper. For employees that enter their time into Core CT, you will now enter your time directly into Kronos Workforce Central. Atlas employees will now use Telestaff with minor exceptions. How do I get support if I encounter an issue with Kronos? So this is an escalation chart of what to do if you encounter a problem with Kronos. The first thing to do is reach out to your supervisor, who should then re reach out to us at desp.kronos.ct.gov or the Network Control Center for Technology-Related Issues. If the issue cannot be resolved by DESP, it will be handled by logging a footprints ticket that is forward to, forwarded to DAS and the state Kronos team. As a last resort, we can always have Kronos itself help us with any issues. Today's event is being distributed agency-wide, so it would have been too difficult for us to take individual questions. However, we know that this event and the communications that we are and will be sending will likely generate more questions. To that end, we have set up an inbox for you to email with specific Kronos questions. Please feel free to reach out to us at any time at desp.kronos.ct.gov. So where do we go from here? Everyone should take uh, the e-learnings, watch the videos, and review the job aids that were sent out. Supervisors should review all the materials. If you are an employee and do not manage anyone else's time, you only need to review the employee e-learning video and job aids. Talk to your supervisor and email any questions that you may have. When we send out the link to Kronos, you will have to save it as a bookmark. For now, we will have the Accenture team do a demonstration on some of the Kronos functions. Accenture is on the call and will be showing us Kronos. Gentlemen, over to you. Hey everyone, my name is Steven Lopez and I'll be walking you through some of the employee and supervisor functionality. So starting off, I'm gonna first sign in as an employee. I'm gonna show you exactly where you're gonna be seeing in Kronos. So when you first sign in, the first screen you're gonna view is this My Information screen. And what this does is it shows you all of your punches and TRCs that have an answer for this current pay period. You can also adjust this pay period to view previous pay periods or the, or the next ones. And you can hear, you can see your schedule, the date, and all the punches that are currently in the system. On a day-to-day -day basis, you are going to need to punch in and out. And how you're going to do this is through this My Timestamp widget. So as you can see here, I've been working today. I punched in at 8 a.m. And now, for example, let's say I'm leaving early. I can just hit Report Timestamp. Then you'll get this banner here confirming that you recorded your time. And once you hit Refresh, it's going to show up on your time card here. OK. Next thing I want to show you is this list of widgets here on the far right. So this is going to be your go-to for all of your employee functionality. So you're going to have your calendar, your requests, reports, and then audits, which show you a list of everything that's been done on your time card. First thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into my calendar. And what my calendar does is it shows you a view of your schedule, whether it's for this current week, for the month, or for whatever time period you want to view. You can see that here. And another thing that you can do here is you can request time off. So for example, let's say you want to request eight hours of vacation. You would come to this widget here and select request time off. Once there, you'll be able to select the pay code that you want to use, the hours, the start time and the daily amount, and then you'll be actually you'll actually have a, a quick view of your accruals so you can see what you have balance of and what you don't. And once you submit your request, your supervisor will be able to approve their request, as I'll show you in the next part of the presentation. Another thing you can do is you can open this My Leave Request widget, and here's where you would start a leave case. So you would scroll to the bottom, and then you either edit an existing leave case or you can press Request New. And here you would enter in the basic information, such as the type of leave, the start date, and the hours. And then HR would go in and actually populate the rest of the information. But this, that would be the first step of actually opening a leave case. Another thing that I wanted to show you is just a quick process on how you would go about actually editing some of these punches or fixing any errors in your time card. So in this case, you can see that there's an 8 a.m. and then a missing out punch. And if you ever hover over that exception, you're going to see that there's going to be a little banner that says missed out punch. So you won't be able to actually physically edit these out punches that are missing. But what you can do is you can enter a comment to make it easier for your supervisor to know what was missing and make that correction themselves. So how you would go about doing this is you would right click on the in punch on that day and select comments. And from there, from this drop down, you can just select explanation. 
And for example, I can just put in something as simple as LF430. And once you select add and OK, this comment will stay here on the stem card. And then when your supervisor goes in, they'll be able to see this comment here, and then they can actually just fill in this out punch. Another situation is, another situation, for example, is when you might need an override reason code attached to some of your overtime. So in this scenario, the best practice for this would also be to right click and add a comment here. And you also select explanation and then fill in whatever you want to fill in, whether that's a case number, an override reason code, or just general information. You just enter that there. And you'll see all the information that you, that supervisor would see all this information that you entered here as soon as they navigate to your time garden. Once you finish making those changes, you'll be able to hit save and everything will stay in your time card and your supervisor will be able to make the appropriate edits. The last step of all your responsibilities as an employee will be to actually approve your time card at the end of the pay period. This is going to flag to your supervisor that everything here is correct and that you're finished making all your punches or corrections. So what you would do is after you punch in on the last day of the pay period, you'd go to this approved time card button and select approve time card. And you'll get this banner informing you that you approved it and then all the punches will turn yellow. It is important to know, however, that if you approve this time card before it's time, you'll see the screen turn yellow and you won't be able to punch in or out. So in this case, what you would need to do is either remove the time card, prove it yourself or reach out to your supervisor to make sure they didn't approve it by accident. And that pretty much wraps up everything that you need to do as an employee. So now I'm going to switch to the supervisor persona and give you a quick introduction there. Okay, so now I'm quickly going to log into the supervisor persona and give you a view of all the super supervisor functionality. So as soon as you log in, the first thing you're gonna see is the same My Information screen. So this is gonna be similar to the previous demonstration, the same exact process of actually punching in your time, viewing your calendar, making any requests that you need to make. But when you actually wanna run through any of your supervisor or timekeeper responsibilities, you're gonna to wanna to click this plus button and select Manage My Department. So once you're here, the first thing you're going to see is this quick find which allows you to search for all your employees and then this list of related items which is all the widgets that you have access to as a supervisor first thing i'm going to show you here is actually how to find your employees so here you have two options you can either search for your employees by name so for example if i know my employee's last name ends with lopez I can search asterisk lopez and all those employees pop up but if i don't if i just want to see a quick list of all the employees that i supervise i can just search that asterisk and they'll populate it here now, once I find the employee that I want to edit, all I need to do is select their name and then double click. And this will take me straight to their time card. As you can see here, here are the examples or the edits that I previously showed. And I'm also going to show you how to make these up, also make these corrections. So first things first, you're going to want to check on the different comments added by the employee. In this case, on the 25th, you can hover over and you can see that there's an explanation of, of an out punch at 430. So all you need to do in that scenario is go in there and actually type in that out punch and click save. Once you do that, you're going to see that the exception is appearing. Another thing to note is when you look at these exceptions over here, for this comment here, you're going to see that there's an override reason code and, and a case number. So that's useful for you to see, but you're also going to need to enter that yourself as a different type of comment to make sure that gets transferred into core. So the easiest way to do this is to right click on that comment and select comments. And you can actually highlight this comment and copy, copy it using Control C. And then on the out punch on that same day, you can go in there select comments and add a comment of type information type description. This is the comment that actually transfers over to CT. So once you select that, you just type in that override reason code or case number or any specific note that you need and select OK. And once you hit save, you can hover over that comment and see the information that you've recently entered. Right. The next thing, just as a note, employees cannot make that type of comment. So the employee will only be able to create a comment of type explanation. So this is more for the informational purposes for them to communicate with you. And then you're going to be the one controlling this information type description comment. And that's what gets transferred into course ET. So that's the reason why you have to take it from this employee comment and actually enter it in yourself. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you is actually how to handle a request. So if you switch to this manage my department view, you're going to go to this list of widgets that I mentioned and select requests from the dropdown. Once there, you're going to be able to see all the requests by your employees for this current pay period. You have the option to change the schedule period that you're viewing, and you have the option to change it by status that you want to see. For example, if you want to see only cases that have been approved or only cases that have been submitted, you would do that here. But in this case, I only have five, so I don't have to worry about that too much. And what I can do is look at any case that's just recently been submitted. In this case, it's here. 
for me, this employee, all I need to do is double click on that and I can see the details. In this case, this employee requested eight hours of vacation. So what I can do is I can scroll down and see if they have that balance and they do. So that means that I can approve this if I want to. So what I would do is I would highlight that request and click the approve button here on top. And once you confirm that this is what you want to do, you just select approve and then that vacation code will automatically go to their timesheet and then you, it doesn't require any further steps. Now let's say that this employee decided not to take that vacation. There's a quick step, a quick two step process that you can follow to actually remove that request and remove that code from their time frame. What you would do is you would request a cancellation or the employee can request a cancellation as well using this button here. And once either you or the employee requests this cancellation, you will see this as cancel submitted. And this prompts you to actually approve this cancellation using this button here. And that will be the last step to actually making sure that everything is gone for this request. So you won't have to worry about actually deleting the TRC or going back into the system. That this will be the last step. Okay, and then the next thing I will show you is manager delegation. So situations where you're going to be out for an extended period of time, you're going to want to make sure another supervisor is delegated to handle the employees that you supervise. So to do that, you're also going to start this management department view. You're going to select manager delegation from this list on the top right, on the far right. Once you do that, you're going to see a button with the same name, and clicking that will take you to this pop-up here. So it's important to note that delegations only work laterally, so you'll only be able to delegate to another supervisor. To another supervisor. So what you'll do here is you'll select the supervisor from the list, select the date that you want to use. For example, let's say today, tomorrow and then the role that you're delegating. And once you hit save and close, that employee will receive a request for that delegation. And that's going to be under this same request widget. Just by switching from this drop down, you'll see manage delegation. And here you have all the option to view all your requests. And then just by clicking on them, you can actually approve or deny a delegation. The next thing I want to show you is uh, just the use of this go to button. So this is going to be the most important button for actually navigating between screens. So if you want to go straight to the request widget only for this employee, you can do that here. Or if you want to view their schedule or make any corrections, you can press this go to button and go to the schedule planner. And once you're there, you're going to be able to see their schedule for any pay period that you want to view. And you'll also have the option to edit the pattern as needed. The last thing I'm going to show you for actually editing uh, employee's time is that how to actually approve the time card. So once the entire pay period is closed, all the data has been entered and all these exceptions have been corrected, you want to click this approved time card button, similar to what an employee would do and select approved time card. Once you do that, your timesheet will turn yellow, flagging that you've already approved it. And if both the employee and the supervisor have approved it, then this, this timesheet will turn green. And that will flag that you're pretty much done with this timesheet for the pay period. And just as a note, there's also a genie that you can use to view what the status is of the current pay period. So if you, if you select this quick find button and select pay period close from the drop down. This will give you a, a quick view of all the information for all of your employees. So you'll be able to see which employees have shown, which employees have approved their time, which ones have been approved by, by uh, which ones you have personally approved, and then which ones have been signed off. And this is just a quick validation that everything in the pay period has been completed success successfully. And one more thing that I did want to mention. And and that is very important is actually, actually how to approve overtime as well as approving a time card. So whenever you go into an employee's time card, you're going to potentially see this red stopwatch here on the far left. Whenever you see this, that means that there's overtime that requires approval. So what you can do here is you can right click and select approve overtime. And then here you have the option to select what type of overtime you want to approve. So there are three options that we generally recommend. All, if you know that you want to approve all the time that they have on that day, none, if you know that that time wasn't pre-approved and you don't want to approve it, or time window, which could, for example, mean that you approve the overtime before the shift, but not the overtime after the shift. In this case, I'll click all. You'll see that this stopwatch turns green, this overtime has been approved, and it will automatically go to the bucket that it needs to go to. So once you do that, you can click save, and that should be the majority of the responsibilities as a supervisor. All right, thank you.